Ahoy there, you land lovers! In this video, we're going to be creating a Monte Carlo simulation of a stock, uh, some stock prices, shares, what have you, with Python. So let's let's go. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to do some imports um, to make our lives much easier. So we are going to import uh, NumPy. So we do import NumPy, and to make our lives easier, we do is as MP. That means that we can reference it by just saying MP dot you know uh, zeros or what have you. So we can reference NumPy with MP as opposed to just saying NumPy. We're also going to import some cheeky little pandas. Again, we're going to do that as PD. We are going to import from data's panda reader. We're going to import um, the data module slash class, whatever it is. Do do do, and we're going to do that. Then we need to import two matplotlib things. So matplotlib is this library which is really good for doing plotting things, as you might guess from the title. Uh, and we also need to import matplotlib uh, pyplot. I can't type as usual. Pyplot. And then we'll do that as plt. Final thing we need to import is scipy.stats. Scipy dot stats and we need to import the norm function okie dokily we're going to save that what the hell just happened oh my god amateur hour okay apparently that that's fine whatever okay um so how should we do this well we'll do um we'll do a function we'll say uh, get simulation we're going to pass in the ticker of the stock, and we're going to pass in the name of the stock. Um, and we'll just, for the moment, say. Uh, and before I forget, let's let's quickly call the method at the bottom of the class with some test stuff. So I know the stock in the UK that we can use is uh, UU dot L. That's United Utilities. So if I put in the title, say United utilities okay that's what we're going to do there so let's start getting the data okay so the way we get the data is we first want to create a pandas data frame so we say data is equal to pd dot data frame the next thing we need to do is we need to use that uh, pandas data reader to get data from the internet in one easy method call so we're going to say data, um, we're going to say ticker, like this, and we're going to say wb, so we're going to use that data reader, we're going to say data reader, ticker, data source, now we used to be able to use Google Finance but that's been deprecated so we're going to use Yahoo Finance instead, we're going to say start date, um, the start date is literally just the first day we want to get prices from. I'll just pick an arbitrary date like the 1st of January 2007. Um, then we want to only get the adjusted close. So what the adjusted close is, if you don't know, um, when a stock closes for the day, um, it will close, let's say it closes at 100 pence a share, right? And let's say there are uh, 100 shares in existence. So 100 shares. So that means that there are uh, there's ten thousand uh, in the market cap, right? But one day, let's say that it, what happens is they do a stock split. So instead of having a uh, hundred shares, there are now two hundred shares. Now, if the price was still a hundred pence, it would mean that suddenly the value of the company has gone up to twenty thousand, which is completely wrong. Like it shouldn't be doing that. So what will happen in response is that. Um, it will it will stay at ten thousand, but the price will change to reflect the new shares. And in this case, of course, it's going to half, so it'll become fifty pence. So when we do the adjusted uh, close, what we're doing is we're sort of ignoring these splits and sort of treating it as if they never happened. Because if we just use the close value, for example, you would see that one day there's a hundred pence, and then the next day there's fifty pence. And if you didn't know that there was a close, uh, there was a stock split then it would look like there was a oh, you know a 50% fall in the price of the stock. So we're going to use the adjusted close to circumvent that issue. A little background about the stock market there. 
Right, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the log of the returns. So for this, we're going to be using numpy. We're going to say numpy.log. And then one plus, we take the data and we get the percent return, uh, sorry, percent change of the data, like that. The next thing we need to get is the mean. For this, we're going to use the letter U to represent it. The reason for that is that in the mathematical literature, they use the Greek letter mu, not the Pokemon, just a letter that looks very similar to U, except for this little bit here is extended a little bit further out like that. Uh, so that's what that is. That's why we're using U there. Um, next, we need to get the variance. Now, the variance is essentially uh, a measure of how far the stock prices are spread out from the mean. So we just say log returns and we just say var. Next, we're going to get the drift. Now, the drift is a bit of an interesting concept because the drift is, is the change of the um, average value of our stock prices over time. Now, the reason we need that for a Monte Carlo simulation is because we're sort of going to use the, the concept of drift, of how much this stock has, has sort of changed over time to use that to sort of project into the future. And you'll see what we mean uh, when we get to doing that. Um, I will just say now as well, there are going to be things here that you might not understand um, too much because some of it you need to have quite a knowledge of statistics to fully appreciate. So don't worry too much if you're, if you're sort of not following some of it. You can always um, look up any of the things I'm mentioning afterwards, but this, this tutorial is really just going to show you how to create that Monte Carlo simulation so you can go from not knowing anything about our statistics and just follow the tutorial, having a bit of fun along the way. Okay, so we just I've just done two things while I was typing there and talking. Um, we've got the drift. We've also got something called the standard deviation. The standard deviation is essentially a measure of the dispersion of the stock prices. Okay, so the next thing we need to say is, well, how, how far in the future do we want to go? So we're gonna say, let's say 365 days. There we go. Um, and how many simulations do we want to run? Well, let's say 10. 10 is probably a good number. Uh, should work fine. There we go. Um, okay, the next bit we do, um, we're going to do here is we are going to essentially create uh, a series of random potential future returns for each day. Um, we're going to take the drift, the, de the standard deviation, along with some sort of random percentage values. And we're going to sort of create that array that we're then going to use to figure out what the stock price would be at the end of that day. So, say daily returns. And we're going to say numpy.exponential. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated statistically. We take the standard dev dot values, and we multiply that by norm dot the percent point function. So we're going to get a percentage thing here. We're then going to say mp.random, but rand, and then we're going to give it the intervals we want to do. So the number of days, basically, intervals, and then we're going to say how many iterations, like so. Okay, there we go. So here we go. Next bit, we just do this data i location minus one. Sorry, square brackets there. Okay. What we're then going to do is we're going to create this um, an array of zeros. So just zeros in the array, but it's going to follow the same shape of the array that we have created for the daily returns. And then we're going to sort of use that and we're going to append, instead of having the zeros in there, we're going to sort of swap them out for actual values. So price a list is equal to mp.zeros underscore like daily returns. That way we don't have to sort of create an ar array. We can just sort of use this and go on and do this. Okay, so then let's take the first of the price list and we'll, we'll say that's equal to the data. Da -da -da. There we go. So that's what the start point is. We say for t in range, we say from the first interval of those t intervals. What we then want to do is say price list t is equal to price list t minus 1 which is why we've had to sort of we've had to put um, the data here in the first the first point of the array 
um, is going to have that data. So we just take the for the first time we do it, we're going to say minus one, which will be this one. Then from then on out, it'll be the the next day's one. I've just made an absolute hash of explaining that. Bloody hell! Essentially, what we're going to do is for the first time we go through this, we're going to take the data we have. Then the next time we're going to have the next day's data. So we're going to work on each day's data to figure out what the stock price will be. My God, that was horrendously explained. If everyone's still watching, well done for, for persevering with that nonsense. Now, what's interesting now is after we've only written 31 lines of code, it's all sorted. So we just need to start showing the plot. And to do that, all we have to do is take the um, matplotlib library, the pyplot library, and we're going to say dot figure and we'll give it the size of fig size will be equal to I'm just making this up uh, equal to 10 by 6 we can always adjust it if it doesn't work out then as every good math teacher will te tell you always give your title to, uh, give your oh my god give your plots a title my I can't even speak today this is horrendous there we go dot name that's nice and cheeky uh, we also want to label our axes so the y label that's going to be the price now in the case of this it's going to be the price in pence if you've chosen a different stock consult your local uh, what you, you you should know what the um, what units the price is in then on the x x is across that's the one that goes across the bottom a little mnemonic there to help you remember that sort of nonsense that's going to be the time in days. Um, then we need to say we need to actually plot it. So we're going to take that price list and we're going to say plt dot plot price list. Then we're going to say plt uh, plt dot show, and that's all we have to do. So if as long as I haven't made any egregious errors, which I almost certainly have, as anyone who's ever watched any of my videos will know, we run this and we're going to see. I have indeed made an error, as I said. What have I done wrong? I've put Panda data reader. Yeah. Right, let's try again. Here we go. This is the second time is the lucky time. Oh, it looks like it's working. Oh my God, whoa. Look at that. So now we have our Monte Carlo simulation. And what, if, what, and this is for United Utilities, the stocks are saying, oh look, it could go all the way up to here or it could go all the way down here. Next, we want, might want to save it. So we could just click here. And save it but we don't want to do that we we're programmers we want to do this in line so we can just we come back here and instead of saying plt plot dot show or we might want to do that as well we can also say save fig and we can just say i'll call it i don't know temp plot or something like that dot png and if we stop the process which is really annoying with with uh, this thing here we need to stop it here if you exit out the program by saying control z it it throws a hissy fit and it's really annoying but if we run it again like that oh it's loaded this time we've got a different one because again we're using random values um, if I exit out of this and we just say uh, ls oh look we have template.png there we go we've got it all saved so you can put it on your wallpaper you can uh, hand it to your friends as a postcard and wow hope you've enjoyed that video thank you very much for watching